friends, welcome to the Rockbridge Regional Library's After School Storytime Adventures. For this last After School Storytime, I thought we should celebrate the end of the year and the holiday season. So I thought it'd be fun to come to our huge Christmas tree at Hopkins Green to read a story. So this is a beautifully lit up at night. We should definitely come check it out. And don't forget, there's a mailbox here direct to Santa. If you haven't already put your letter in. I did it in the parade. That's right, some of you did it in the parade. So I have a book about winter because on Monday is the winter solstice, which means it's gonna be the shortest day of the year. The sun will be shining for the shortest amount of time. And so when I think of winter, I get cold. Right? But this book reminds us that winter can be super warm too. This is called Winter is the Warmest Season and it's by Lauren Stringer. And it comes to us from Harcourt Inc. There they are looking out the window. Winter is the warmest season. Most people think it's summer with its long steamy days, but not me. My world is warmest in the winter. When winter comes, my jacket puffs warm with feathers. My hat grows ear flaps. My pants hide deep in fuzzy boots and my hands wear warm woolly sweaters. When winter comes, summer's plants and animals sleep deep under the thick blankets of snow, while the snowmen build and dance on top, wearing warm wraparound scarves. When winter comes, my iced summer's milk turns to hot chocolate. Cold jelly sandwiches turn into grilled cheeses. Hot soups, hot pies, and oven hot breads make winter the warmest for the inside of me. When winter comes, summer's cool fans hide in the dark basements, while sleeping radiators awake to their dragon selves banging and hissing and pouring heat all through my house. When winter comes, cats sit on laps instead of window sills. Even nights are warmer in the winter. Fires burn in the fireplaces, candles burn in candle places. I think parties are warmer in the winter. And when summer's cool swims, turns into winter's hot baths, nothing wrong with that. I know my pajamas will grow big warm feet. <laughs> my bed is warmest in the winter, piled high with blankets of plaid, blankets striped yellow, and blue star starry quilt on top. In winter, bodies sit closer, books last longer, and hugs squeeze the warmest. They're even reading warm tales. <laughs> For or something or other. Even friends are warmer. The spot warmer in the winter, guys? Oh, um, he's always warm. He's always warm. But does he feel a little bit warmer in the winter? Well, yeah, because it's not going to him. Ah, and in winter, when it's the very warmest and I close my sleepy eyes, I might dream of summer. Just to cool me off. That's how warm he is. <laughs> the end. What is he swimming with? Oh, that's the dog. I was like, is that a platypus? <laughs> okay, we've got another spot to go read a book. Now this one has a little bit of a surprise I wanted to share with you. Let's go check it out.
Hello everybody. Okay, so here's the next spot. I don't know if you've noticed when driving by the library, but some gigantic snowflakes have shown up. Especially the cutest one and in the world. And I made a special one for my friends out there who are big Mandalorian fans. So baby see if you can Yoda. spot Baby Yoda Snowflake. Baby Yoda, baby Yoda, baby Yoda. There he is. Baby Yoda. <laughs> Baby Yoda Snowflake. It's the kind of year we're having that we need a Baby Yoda Snowflake. So I hope you enjoy these pretty snowflakes over the winter the season. One. Especially the Baby Yoda one. So let's read okay, another book. Well, this book, I wish I could have read yesterday when we actually had a little bit of snow. But this can be a book that we think about for future snow days, which will happen. I feel like it's a good sign. We've already had snow twice in December. So this book is called A Perfect Day and it's by Karen Berger. And obviously it has snow in it. And there's snow angels. This is kind of like what happens when we get a snow day, like all the fun we can have in one day. And it comes to us from Green Willow Books. It snowed and snowed and snowed and snowed. <laughs> the whole world was white. The school was white. The house and house and house yep, and house was white. And the pond was ice. ice. Emma got to make the first tracks in the snow. Crunch, 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 crunch. Look. Where'd she go? Whoop. Whoop. You have to say whoop when you go around a loop. No. It's just called a risk. But then Leo whooshed by on his skis. <sighs> Otto got lost in the deep drift. Is Otto the dog? I guess so, yeah. Sasha and Max showered Oscar with a wild flurry of snowballs. While Willa climbed to the top of the big mountain. There she goes. Thea and Leah built the tallest snowman ever. And the smallest. <laughs> These are babies. Mickey made the very best snow fort with Sarah. No, oh, we've never made a snow fort. We should make a snow fort. <laughs> Then Everett sped by on a sled. Whoa. So did Finn and Simone and Sophie and Sadie. Oh, they're good. They're good. They're Finn did it. Nick and Anya spun loop de loops on the frozen pond. And Charlotte opened an icicle stand. It's a good idea. We found icicles yesterday. Mm -hmm. Icicles, get your icicles. Then, all together, everybody made snow angels. Look at all those angels. Except for the dog. Doggy's like, uh, I'm just gonna make footprints, paw prints. Paw angels. Your paw angel. <laughs> Dusk came and the lights blinked on. It was time to go home to warm hugs and dry clothes and steaming hot chocolate. <laughs> That's what we need right now. The perfect end to a perfect day. Now I hope you friends had a perfect day yesterday with some snow, maybe some sledding, maybe a snow angel, and I hope some hot cocoa. Okay, well let's see what we're, where we're gonna where should we, let's see where we're gonna go next for our third and final story. We'll see you then. Okay, we've got one more spot to read a book and we decided to read right in front of our Christmas tree. Now this is a brand new book by Jan Brett, the author of The Mitten, which you probably know. And this is a brand new book by her called Cozy. So we thought, 
where better to read a book about cozy than in front of your Christmas tree? So here we go. Cozy by Jan Brett. Brought to us by G.P. Putnam's Sons. Storms rolled over the tundra when Cozy, the musk ox, was separated from his herd. He was, he was used to being with his family. His mother and his father had named him Cozy because his silky coat was so soft and thick. Cozy braced himself against the wind and his thick coat warmed him like a blanket. In the trussock, a mother lemming's pups were squeaking loudly. I'm cold! I'm cold! I'm cold! She used to triple carry. <laughs> she used a triple carry to tunnel them toward the new spot where she saw a towering mountain of fur. In no time, the lemming family settled in next to the cozy's left hoof. Shh, she whispered. Quiet voices. And that musk ox will never notice us. So they're sneaking in on his fur. Snowshoe Hare, feeling chilly, had the same idea. Master musk ox, he asked politely, may I wade out the storm under the protection of your very thick coat? Cozy was happy for the company and well aware that the Lemming family had snuck in. He said, welcome, Snowshoe Hare. But mind those lemmings, quiet voices and gentle thumpings only. Snow swirled and f suddenly all grew white. Was it a clump of snow that had hit Cozy in the forehead? No, it was feathers. When Cozy opened up his eyes, he was looking into big yellow ones. The eyes belonged to a snowy owl, who also had a request. Oh, my magnificent Umananga, <laughs> would you be so kind as to give me shelter? The wind has tumbled me terribly. Cozy knew that snowy owls and lemmings and snowshoe hares were not always fast friends. But he agreed. With some conditions, house rules are quiet voices, gentle thumping, and claws to yourself. Arctic Fox's nose was turning blue. Her bushy tail wasn't warm enough, and every time she wrapped it around herself, the wind unwrapped it. Thinking Cozy would make a good windbreak, she slid, uh, saddled up to him. Do you mind, Mr. Muskox, if I unfreeze my nose in your thick fluff? Cozy was happy to welcome a new guest, but eyeing her sharp canines, he answered, For the harmony of all, quiet voices, gentle thumping, claws to yourself, and no biting. As winter went by, the storms grew worse. The wind blew and blew, and low, humpy shape appeared, swaying and shuffling. Its coat was covered with ice balls. Shaggy beast, it growled. I fell into the ice flow, and I am chilled to the bone. Can you help me? Cozy was happy to invite the wolverine in, but added to the house rules. Quiet voices, gentle thumping, claws to yourself, no biting and no pouncing. Cozy's new friends cleared their coats, preened their feathers, napped, and were glad for their comfy shelter. But then, above the wind, the animals heard, yip, yip, yip. Yip, yip, yip. <clears throat> a team of huskies, always on the lookout for a good thing, barreled into Cozy's big bulk fleeing creatures in all directions. Their musher, a sea otter, looked on in dismay. <laughs> Hi, the lead dog grinned. 
House rules, chorused the jostled lemmings, snowshoe hare, snowy owl, arctic fox, and wolverine. Quiet voices, gentle thumping, claws to yourself, no biting, no pouncing, and be mindful of others. Cozy, wary of the lead dog, who looked a lot like a wolf, shook, shook, shook his horns to make sure the huskies understood. As time went by, the wind calmed a little, and the arctic sun climbed higher in the sky. The animals felt more at home every day. But Cozy had spring fever. I want to find my family. How can I move about with these visitors underfoot? The house rules were stretched every day. When was a nibble a bite? When was a hoot quiet or loud? There was bumping, making faces, and nobody was saying, I'm sorry. One sunny day, the lemmings were playing climb the ladder. A great chunk of Cozy's coat came off. Then another hank off in the snowy owl's talons. Cozy remembered this from last year. Shedding meant it was finally spring in Alaska. Hank by hank, all of Cozy's warm, silky winter coat drifted down the slope. He's shedding. Cozy's lodgers started heading to their spring home. Cozy hadn't felt so free and breezy since he was a calf. He jumped, he boiled, and then, in the middle of a gleeful leap, he saw his herd. There they are. He ran to join his mother, his father, his sister, and his brother. Where were you? We were worried, said his sister, Fluffy. We missed you, said his brother, snugly. I made new friends, Cozy told them. But it was nice to get back to Muskox ways. They all formed a circle, babies in the middle. But Cozy felt curious, curiously alone. Then the breeze carried squeaky and growly and whistly voices. See you next year, Cozy. Meet you when the snow flies, Cozy. The snowshoe hair thump, thump, thumped as they called back. We can't wait to get cozy with cozy. In the end. So we'll meet him again next winter when it's cold, cold, cold again. All right, friends. Well, we've got one last thing we're going to do. Rose is going to play us off with a Christmas tune that I think you all will know. And sing along. Thank you for joining us for after school story time. And we're going to close it out with a song from Rose on the Piano. What are you going to play? Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Oh, I know that one. Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Okay, take it away. Happy New Year. See you next year. Bye. Bye.